Hi, my name is Mario and uh, I've been a clinical research associate or a CRA for over 10 years. I also have three years of experience as a, a clinical research coordinator. Uh, my experience has been primarily in oncology and uh, I've put out a video about the kinds of questions you're going to be asked, asked at a general CRA interview. This video is going to be a little more specific to the kinds of questions that you're going to be asked at an oncology uh, interview. So if you're interviewing for an oncology CRA, these are the questions that uh, you should be prepared to answer. So the first question, and this is a little more general, is tell me about your therapeutic experience. And they're really looking for uh, what type of experience you have and in what phases of trials you've went for. So as far as my experience goes, I have approximately 11 years of field monitoring experience plus three years of uh, study coordinator experience uh, in oncology. My 11 years of field monitoring included uh, lung cancer, prostate cancer, solid tumors, leukemia, lymphoma, uh, and I also did a little bit of heme with uh, multiple myeloma. So that's my oncology experience. I have fairly limited uh, therapeutic experience out of that of oncology. I worked on an influenza vaccine adjuvant study and I worked on a cholesterol study. So the next thing you'll be asked is uh, tell me or explain what Rhesus 1.1 is. And one of the things that surprised me over the years is how many people say they're an oncology CRA or say they have extensive or, or work experience in oncology and then struggle to uh, define racist or uh, explain the details of racist. So for an oncology CRA interview, you need to know racist and specifically racist 1.1. Um, there's another version, racist 1.0. It's obsolete at this point. Uh, there's also another criteria uh, by the WHO, the WHO criteria to measure uh, solid tumors, but Again, that is also uh, not commonly used. So RESIS 1.1, uh, starting with what does RESIS stand for? And RESIS stands for the Response Evaluation Criteria in Solid Tumors. So uh, RESIS is a specific uh, measurement system for solid tumors. The first thing you need to know with RESIS 1.1 is the imaging modality. What kind of imaging is used? So RESIS 1.1 specifically calls for a PET-CT or an MRI. The important thing here to, to note is if you start with uh, an MRI, you can't later compare your measurements to a PET-CT or vice versa. So if you start with an MRI, you make sure that all the measurements you're comparing to are on an MRI. If you start with PET-CT, you make sure all subsequent measurements are on a PET-CT. Uh, you cannot go between imaging modalities. The next thing you need to know is the difference between measurable and non-measurable and target and non-target. Um, it's a little complex, but the easy way to summarize it is for something that is not a lymph node, the criteria are uh, at least 10 millimeters to be uh, measurable, and that's 10 millimeters in the long axis to be measurable for something that is not a lymph node. Uh, between 5 and 10, it would be uh, non-measurable. Below that, it, it wouldn't be pathological. Uh, for a lymph node, it has to be at least 15 millimeters in the short axis to be measurable. So 15 millimeters or greater is measurable. Uh, between 10 and 15 is non-measurable, and uh, below 10 is non-pathological. So those are your measurable, non-measurable um, uh, prescriptors. So what RESIS uh, calls for is basically uh, comparing scans uh, throughout, so to see if there is a complete response, a partial response, progressive disease, or stable disease. So let's go ahead and uh, work to define those. Um, and uh, before uh, before I get into the depths of that, I should mention that uh, Resist 1.1 caps uh, how many lesions you can look at. It's, uh, it's a total of five lesions with no more than two per organ. Uh, so you'd take the sum of your diameters for your picked lesions, and then you would uh, compare the percentage increase, decrease um, as the trial progresses. Uh, we're going to take for this example that a, a clinical protocol that calls for scans every three cycles. So you have your baseline uh, measurements. You look and you see 
uh, that everything's disappeared on the next scan. So the lesions have all disappeared. So this would be a complete response. Uh, the, so the, um, that should be hopefully self-explanatory. What was uh, there initially has disappeared. If the um, sum of the diameters is uh, greater than or equal to a 30% um, decrease from the, uh, the initial scan, then we'd have a partial response. So uh, this case, if you, there, there's still uh, disease present, uh, but it's decreased uh, in size. So your response would be a partial response for uh, greater than or equal to a 30% decrease. Um, progressive disease uh, has two criteria. So uh, the to be progressive disease, you would need to have uh, greater than or equal to a 20% uh, increase, and you'd, you'd compare it to the lowest uh, point and the nadir point. For example, if from the first scan to the second scan three cycles later, there's a partial response. Now we have a lower uh, bar. So and then you see a 20% or greater increase from from that uh, partial response. Then you'd have progressive disease. And not only does it need to meet the percentage uh, uh, the percentage requirement, it also has to have a minimum of a five millimeter absolute value change. Uh, the other way you can get progressive disease is the appearance of new lesions. The appearance of new lesions would also be um, progressive disease. So uh, that's progressive disease. The other uh, criteria is stable disease, and stable disease is basically between a partial response and progressive disease. So if it's not progressed and it's not a partial response, it would be considered stable disease. So I, that is um, recess 1.1 in a nutshell. Uh, there are a lot of videos out there that will go into much more detail, but that's about the level you would need to know for uh, an interview. The next question you're going to often be asked is about TNM staging, and you don't need to go into uh, much depth on TNM staging uh, compared to what you would uh, want to say for Resist. Uh, Resist is sort of the bread and butter for oncology and for solid tumors, so uh, that is one of the questions that is going to be asked at 100% of oncology uh, CRA interviews. So the, the next question is, what is TNM staging? And uh, T stands for tumor, N stands for nodal, M stands for metastases. So it is a staging system that basically looks and tells you how far uh, uh, your tumor has spread or how, how is, it, is it local, is it spread in the area, is it spread throughout? Um, so there are uh, three letters, so tumor status is between uh, T0 and T4. Uh, nodal status is between N0 and N3C. And metastatic uh, status is either 0 or 1, or you can also have uh, MX if it's just not assessed. But uh, that is TNM staging in a nutshell. Uh, if, for an example, uh, let's just take the M in metastatic uh, status. If it's M0, it means it hasn't metastasized, and if it's M1, it means uh, there's distant metastatic uh, disease present. So that's an example. Uh, you can watch several videos on TNM staging. Um, TNM staging is not something that's going to be asked uh, in as much depth as resist would be. The other uh, thing you might be asked is the difference between grading and staging of tumors. Um, so TNM is a staging system. Uh, people may ask you about uh, grading, and grading um, looks at the pheno uh, phenotypic uh, level uh, to see uh, under uh, a microscope and in a pathology lab how aggressive is this tumor. So uh, gr uh, more uh, higher grade means that the uh, tumor is more aggressive and more likely to, to spread. So staging is actually looking at scans and looking at saying, okay, uh, what is actually there? And then uh, grading is looking at it at a phenotypic level and saying, all right, how aggressive is this tumor? Uh, is it uh, less aggressive? Is it more aggressive? So that's grading versus staging. Um, so that is a question that may come up. The um, other question for oncology that's been more and more kind, uh, uh, becoming common is people will ask you, 
all right, pick an area of oncology you're comfortable in, pick a disease, and then uh, they'll ask you a series of questions about that disease. So for this example, I'm going to pick prostate cancer. Uh, that's because where the majority of my experience is in. Um, so my most recent five plus years have been uh, working with prostate cancer. So one of the questions you will be asked uh, is, can you tell me about uh, chemotherapy regimens that are used in prostate cancer? So uh, for prostate cancer, the common theory the chemotherapy regimen is a taxane-based chemotherapy regimen, so it would be a drug like uh, doxotaxel or carboxotaxel. Uh, those are used pretty commonly in prostate cancer. Um, you also uh, would may get some of the um, hormonal therapies for prostate cancer uh, and questions about hormonal therapies. Um, and in prostate cancer, we do uh, androgen deprivation therapy or ADT therapy, and it's often combined with um, uh, a drug like apiraterone. Um, some of the other things in, in prostate cancer that are used are a drug like um, apalunamide, um, and sometimes you'll have the uh, bone targeted therapies, uh, zoledronic acid, radium 223, and you may have an immunotherapy like Provenge, um, and then you'd have the uh, GnRH uh, agonists like Lupron, Zoledex, um, Charlestar or you might have a GnRH antagonist like Firmagon. So that's prostate cancer in specific. So those are common uh, drugs used in prostate cancer. So uh, my recommendation is pick an area that uh, you're familiar with and uh, look up some of the pharmacology for that area and the common treatments, what's the standard of care. Uh, prostate cancer uh, actually the standard of care is not chemotherapy usually. It tends to be more uh, radiation and, and hormonal therapies, but become familiar so you can answer any questions about the disease uh, that you may be asked. So definitely standard of care uh, is something you'd want to know for uh, whatever area you, you've picked. Common chemotherapy regimens, uh, is radiation common? Uh, are there other treatments that are, are commonly used? Um, and the other thing uh, that you may be asked is what some of the supportive care, uh, supportive therapies given along with, uh, uh, with the chemotherapy regimen or with, well, along with the, any treatment uh, for the specific disease. For example, what are the supportive th therapies that may be used uh, in uh, prostate cancer? And uh, as far as supportive therapies goes, they're looking for things that are given to present uh, to prevent side effects. So, for example. Uh, an antiemetic like Zofran may be given to prevent uh, vomiting. Uh, you may get something like uh, Nolesta for uh, a bone sparing agent, or uh, and depending on what uh, can uh, what sort of uh, treatment you're getting, you may get a prophylactic antifungal or an antibiotic. So uh, definitely know uh, those as well. So I think that is really. Um, the oncology specific questions in a nutshell. I think that's uh, the things that you really want to know. So just to uh, recap, the things you want to know is make sure you uh, know your uh, therapeutic experience in and out. And sometimes it's, it's hard to remember, well, 10 years ago, I worked on a certain uh, type of cancer. So make sure you have that um, listed and memorized so you uh, refresh yourself on your on your therapeutic experience. Uh, what phases of trials have you worked on? Uh, what is Rhesus 1.1? And this is where I spent the most time. What is Rhesus 1.1? Um, and uh, what does it stand for? Uh, what are the details of Rhesus 1.1? And um, after that, TNM staging and what is TNM staging? And the final thing I do is pick an area of cancer and learn everything you can possibly about it, starting with the pharmacology. Start with what are the treatments commonly given um, for, for the type of cancer you've picked. And hopefully with all of that, you should have no problem landing a uh, job as an oncology CRA. And I wish you the best. And as always, if there's something uh, specific you'd like me to make a video on, uh, please uh, list it down in the comments and I will make uh, another video uh, about it. As far as videos I uh, think you're making, the next one uh, would, would possibly be the pros and cons of a CRA job. All right, thank you very much.